Hello, friends, and welcome to the weekly moon update for the week of November 6th through the 12th. We kind of have a bit of a recovery week with a waning crescent moon for the entirety of this week because we won't have our new moon until next Monday. So this is kind of like a recovery week from eclipse season, basically, and getting ready for the new moon on Monday. So we have a couple of community events coming up this week. Uh, number one is I would like to have our moon meeting on Monday. That's right as we're transitioning into Virgo. So I think it'll be a really good time to kind of start off our week getting organized. Then I'm probably going to stream Tarot live on Wednesday. At least that's what I'm planning on. Um, I also have a really exciting uh, video coming out this week. It's a review of this new book by Daniel Dulski, who, if, if if you have been to the moon meetings, you know that we listen to one of her audiobooks once a month at the moon meeting. So um, I'm super excited. This book is coming out this week. I was so lucky to get an, an advanced copy of it. And I ordered, where's the other one? I ordered, <laughs> I ordered a second copy to give away. So keep a lookout for that video so that you can discover how you can get a chance to win uh, this awesome prayer book. Uh, it's a heathen prayer book. Um, so I'm super excited to talk about it if you're not, um, <laughs> if you can't already tell. Um, so that's going to be coming out this week. Yeah, so let's <laughs> let's jump into the energy for, or the moon energy for this week. Like I said, we have a waning crescent moon all week. This is kind of one of those in-between weeks. We are, if you're watching this live on Sunday, this is technically our last quarter moon. So right now we have a half-lit moon and it's just going to decrease until it's dark on next Sunday. And then we'll have our new moon on Monday. So this is a lazy week, a decreasing, waning low energy week for the entirety of the week. Um, because we have most of our energy in the beginning of the week uh, with the last quarter and combined with Virgo energy, I think this is like the time of the week that we should like be getting <laughs> getting those uh, those things that we like really need to get done that we just have to. We can't avoid it. We can't we can't relax until they're done kind of kind of things because by the by the end of the week the moon's going to be dark. And I think this week is also going to be one to kind of process and integrate the roller coaster that was the eclipse season that we've just come out of. It kind of feels like this breath of fresh air like we did it. We made it. And that's kind of reflective too in the cards that we have for this week uh, which I had to put at the bottom cuz this one is uh, horizontal oriented, but we'll get into those in a second. So, uh, so starting off with Monday, we are transitioning from Leo to Virgo. We're not really going to be feeling the Leo energy on Monday unless you get up <laughs> before before 7.30 a.m. Um, you might be feeling a little Leo-ish when while you're getting ready, so maybe you'll put on extra makeup or do your hair extra or whatever, um, but we have a really long transition we have a really long transition throughout the day. Um, it's it's like a 12-hour transition. So the moon starts moving and shifting, and then it won't be technically in Virgo until 7.39 p.m., just in time for our uh, moon, moon meeting. 
so that's going to be a time where we can just like sit down with our planners and our journals and like figure out like, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? How, how are we going to, uh, how are we going to enter into Scorpio, the Scorpio moon cycle as we are actually closing out the Scorpio season? Time, it feels like we have more time in Scorpio season. Uh, we, we have like a couple, a couple more weeks of Scorpio season, which Honestly, I don't know if it was because October moved so quickly. September sped by like crazy and so did October. And I felt like I didn't really get into that spooky vibe until like the week of Halloween. So I, I like that we are still in Scorpio season until the 23rd. And then we're going to have we're going to have our new moon kind of halfway between there. So I, I just. I, I want more of that Scorpio dark shadowy energy, and I think that's going to be really significant for uh, transforming whatever was coming up for you during the eclipse season and integrating it or cleansing and clearing it. Um, I, I saw somebody on social media posting their like favorite underrated Halloween movies from like the 70s, between the 70s and, and the 80s, I think. They may have gone into 90s. I don't know. But there were some movies on there that I had totally forgotten about. And I'm just like, oh, no, but October's over. But because we're still in Scorpio season, it feels like we can still linger in these, like, spooky, scary movies. Um, I'll have to post them in Discord what they, what the name, I can't remember the names of them. But like the she actually showed like clips from the movies and it just like brought brought back all these memories from my childhood that I was just like forgot had forgotten about and my mind was blown. So I'll post them in the the movie section um, if you're looking for movies to continue this kind of spooky vibe as we're making our way in through Scorpio season still. This entire year has felt like a transition year. And I, I know I keep bringing that up in the uh, these moon videos, but as we're closing out the year, I've kind of started that reflection process already of like, I don't know, just thinking about this year as a seven year in numerology and this like need to find balance and synchronicity and like uh, for things to just kind of like, it's almost like the scales have been tilting like all year long. And I think that is like the point of a seven year in nor speaking of numerology of just like finding that balance and integration, letting things fall away that need to fall away um, and finding the things that like really work for you and kind of level you out and get you in sync with your own natural rhythm. Whereas next year we have an eight year, which is going to be more grounded and stable it's still going to have this fluidity to it because of the because of the infinity symbol. Woo. Um because of the infinity symbol, 4 is stable and 4 is stable like 8 breaks down into 4 and 4. Um so this is like I think what we've been learning all year this year is how to stay balanced, stay calm, cool, collected despite the chaos and if you haven't totally like figured that out yet, I think we have been slowly making progress with this thing or, or with like maintaining grounded and centeredness, even amongst the chaos, what like being in the center of the storm and just like staying in tune with yourself and your intuition and not get pulled in and sucked into like whatever is happening around you. So that you're able to make like clear decisions uh, that affect your highest good. And I think the eight year is going to be perfecting that, like really being able to stay grounded, centered amongst the chaos because of that stability that the number eight and the two fours give us. I think we'll probably be talking a lot more about that in the upcoming weeks, especially as we move into Sagittarius season, because Sagittarius season is the season for reflecting on 
the previous year and looking ahead to the next year. So we're going to have that like reflection and integration period once we move into Sagittarius. Um, Scorpio season is about like, is about integrating, transforming, transmuting. And Sagittarius is like, okay, this is what we've done this year, which has been a lot. It's been a lot. (laughs) And now this is where we're going. Um, So anyway, sorry, back to this week. Um, I think the beginning of this week is going to be our time for writing your to-do list, making, uh, prepping your, prepping your meals, making sure you have your healthy snacks. Um, (laughs) I was so good about having my healthy snacks for, uh, the eclipses. But then when it came time, when I had my cycle, I didn't have any of the things and I was really struggling for a little bit, like having healthy food and making sure that you are resting, rehydrating, and making sure that you have like sustenance to get through difficult times is like so important. And it's almost like once you learn that and figure that out, that like when you fall back on it, it's just like so much, it's like chaos. And I'm just like, am I going to have to start freezing smoothies so that they're just in the, (laughs) in the freezer and I can just thaw them whenever I need them? Five hours later. Um, anyways, so (laughs) this uh the beginning of this week while we're in Virgo this is going to be about like getting the things done that you need to get done like like let's do this let's get this shit done um and then once we transition into Libra on Thursday um early in the morning Thursday it's a shorter transition only what is that five three hour three hour transition and then Libra is literally that breath of fresh air I think Virgo is going to help us like get, okay, what do we need to do? And then Libra is going to help us like take a step back, take a deep breath and figure out, okay, what are we, how, what are our, what are our scales doing? Like, let's take a look at our scales. Are they like, are they kind of balancing like this, like a little bit more even, or are you having these like big waves of ups and downs? And how can we kind of maintain that stability and that evenness and that groundedness and that centeredness? Um, and like always with Libra, this is the time for me is like, what am I lacking? What have I been avoiding? What have I been neglecting? Libra is the time to do that. If you still want to put energy into something, then put it, put, use that Libra energy to put into it because otherwise like your energy is being drained by constantly thinking like, oh, I need to do this thing. I need to do this thing, but then like never actually making the time to do it. Libra is the time to do the thing that you've been neglecting, even if if that's like rest and self-care. If you've been go, 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 go this whole crazy chaotic eclipse season, then Libra is the time to rest. If you have been resting, integrating, journaling, reflecting, then Libra is the time to get your to-dos done. Do do the shit that you've been avoiding and neglecting. Um, so that's Thursday and Friday, closing out the week, closing out the work week anyways, with just like figuring out, okay, what have you been avoiding? Let's get this shit done. Stop avoiding it because it's sucking your energy. Then let's see, Saturday is when we transition into Scorpio, which is going to bring us into the new moon energy. It's a like three hour transition Saturday. So um, Saturday evening is when we'll technically be in Scorpio. And so we'll talk more about the new moon on on next week. But like Sunday and Monday is going to be your new moon times if you if you want to be planning and scheduling any sort of downtime rest time, massage time, uh, self-care time, uh, ritual time, ceremony time, journaling time, tarot time. Sunday and Monday is going to be like the time to do that. So overall, this week just feels like eclipse recovery week. This is Virgo stepping in, helping us clean up, get organized after (laughs) after the chaos, cleaning up after the storm. And this is also like groundedness, like kind of pull yourself together, get yourself grounded and centered, 
um, come back down to the earth. Um, air is going to help us think like to take, first of all, to take a deep breath, to re-regulate, to rebalance and to kind of collect whatever, whatever it is that you need to collect, whatever you've been neglecting. Um, it, this helps us like gain air energy helps us gain like a fresh new perspective on things. And then the water energy, I really think that this Scorpio new moon is going to be just kind of like cleansing and releasing versus unearthing and digging things up. Cause we've already done that. We've already done that with the eclipse. We've unearthed all the things and now it's time to cleanse it, release it, heal it, integrate it, transform it, transmute it. Um, and that's the beauty of water energy. I know we talk really negatively about, oh, water energy is so emotional and blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes you need to cry. Sometimes you need to release and sometimes you need to let go. So we love water energy here. Allow yourself to be watery. Allow yourself to be sad and release those tears because they're going to make you feel better in the end. So our card for this week, I thought was really interesting for a full moon temple card to come in as we are like, as the moon is waning. Um, but let's, let's read the message and see how we can make a connection to this week. Uh, the keywords are celebration, peak and transcendent moment. So the time has come to celebrate an achievement, a moment of glory and beauty to recognize the sublime blessing that is with you. It is time to set up an altar within the home to sing the praises of the spirit and to give thanks for all that you have. Look around and know that in every moment of gratitude lies a key which unlocks more gifts that opens the gate and allows the awaiting treasures to lift to find their way to you. It is time to build a temple to the fullness of your spirit just as this is just as this moon is full and this temple has been created to expand her energy and amplify it. So too when you build an altar or create a space within your life for gratitude celebration, joy, glad union with others. The beauty of life grows more apparent, seems more present, and can be felt with every light tread of your feet upon the blessed earth. Put down the work and carve out the time. Commit to celebrating your life and recognizing the milestones of your personal soul quest along the way. Take time to create a sacred space, be it an altar or a room or a home, that is a safe, nurturing space for you. Life must have its moments to delight in, and you must now find a way to bring into existence a celebration of what you have done and making it so far. Celebrate your life. We of the hidden worlds do, for you are a hopeful and unique creature, and when you remember this, you will feel the tide of pleasure sweep through you once again reawaken you to the joy of your existence. The illumination statement is, I take time to celebrate who I am and what I am becoming. Each achievement is worth recognizing for when I do, the possibilities of life open to me. So I think this, despite the like full moon on a waning moon week, um, I think that this is a really beautiful sentiment for eclipse recovery week. Like, we have gone through so much within the last few weeks, within the last eclipse season, and within this entire year. Like, recognize the accomplishments, recognize the things that you've overcome, recognize the fact that you have taken a break when you needed to take a break, recognize the fact that you've gotten the things done that you needed to get done despite all the craziness that's happening in the world. Like celebrate every single moment and be grateful for it because then more good things will come to you. When you express gratitude for things, the universe is like, oh, cool. She likes that. Let's let's like give more of that. And this freaking card is the card that comes up like all the time. This is like I would probably say at least 50 percent of the time we get this card in personal readings and public readings and collective readings. This card is always, always, always coming up. And it's because we forget. We forget that when we put up walls and we put up boundaries 
and we are restricting and not allowing not allowing things and and this doesn't necessarily mean just with money it means with energy in general even though it's the title of the card is unlimited prosperity it's energy in general not just like physical tangible money but energy like if you are not putting love out into the world you're not going to receive love back if you are not putting joy out into the world you're not going to be receiving joy if you're only putting negativity out in the world you're only going to be receiving negativity so money is energy and we hold a precious choice whether to prevent or encourage its flow are your channels for giving and receiving open wide enough do you allow the vibration of prosperity to radiate both from you from you and towards you Reflect on your resources and how you can use them. Create more abundance for both yourself and those around you. Remember also to give back with an open heart for all that is coming your way. Give thanks before we receive. So this is a really important week to be expressing gratitude and being grateful. And really, this is the month of gratitude. I mean, with Thanksgiving coming up at the end of the month, like this is a time where we think about gratitude and try to be mindful about expressing it more often. So the this is a solar plexus card located in the center of your abdomen. The crystal they recommend is yellow fluorite and the herb is basil. So you might want to incorporate any either that crystal or that herb into your life this week. Even if you already have like an altar or a sacred space, uh, that doesn't mean you can't like refresh it. Like it's I try to remember to refresh it every, every every waning moon is when I like to like do my like deep cleaning um, so that on the new moon, everything is just like fresh. Um, like I've refilled the water on my on my altar or like made sure I have a candle that still has a wick in it or still has wax in it. So and I even just like to mundanely clean it, like dust it. Um, I like to do that on waning moon because we're releasing on waning moons. We're letting go. So you want to cleanse and clear all of that dust and physical debris as well as the, the energy cleansing as well. So when we are releasing and letting go, then we, we are making room for more positive things to come our way. I hope that you have a happy, wonderful recovery week. Uh, recognize all the progress that you have made, recognize all the obstacles you've overcome this the last few weeks and this year. You might want to start like putting a gratitude jar or a gratitude bowl on your altar. Um, something you can every time you think of something that you're grateful for, write it down on a little slip of paper and put it in the jar or put it in the bowl. And uh, that way, whenever you're feeling down, you can come back to that jar and pull pull a piece of paper out and remind yourself that of all of the blessings that you do have in your life. Or if you don't have an altar, create an altar. Create some sort of little space, whether it's like on your nightstand or your bookshelf or the hearth above the mantle above your fireplace. Just some little space, some little table that you can just like arrange objects that you connect to spiritually and um, have that space to place a oracle card on or light a candle every now and then or have it be where you keep your cleansing spray. And so every time you walk by, you can kind of cleanse your energy um, or incense and use smoke cleansing. Um, I, I really don't know how people live without altars or sacred spaces. So if you don't have one already, create one. They're so fun to make. And uh, I sometimes have like little altars all over my house. Um, you can go, there's no like one specific way to do it. I think I think maybe that's what's intimidating about it. People think that you have to have it a specific way and you don't just make it sacred and sacred to you. Um, and that can be anything, whatever you connect to spiritually uh, can go on an altar. Um, so I hope you have a, a happy, wonderful recovery week. We'll see you next week for the new moon. I hope maybe you can come to the moon meeting to just kind of chill out and get yourself organized and grounded and centered for the upcoming new moon and um, look out for that YouTube video, the book review video, and your chance to win a copy of the book. 
And thank you for stopping by the, the other side of the looking glass. I hope to see you back here sometime soon. time um